Hi, everyone. I think we are ready to go. Hi, Israel. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Awesome. Thanks. Good. Okay, how do you feel? May we start or shall we wait for a couple of more minutes? Uh, we can start on time. Um, I figure uh, attendees will come in, you know, pretty quickly, uh, you know, and we'll okay. go, go straight into awesome. it. So I'll jump in with a quick introduction. My name is Lillian and I'm happy to welcome you to our second webinar on a series of live webinars uh, for anti-crisis supply chain planning. These webinars are brought to you by GMDH software and this is the demand forecasting and inventory planning software in cooperation and partnership with our experts, <laughs> leading experts all around the globe. Uh, today's topic is emergency supply chain planning with Fishbowl and G GMDH Streamline. And I'm excited to introduce the speaker of today, Israel Lopez. Israel is a founder of Israel Lopez Consulting. He has 16 years of experience working with specialty software as Streamline, Fishbowl, NetSuite, etc. Correct me if I'm wrong or add yep. on. Yep, you're <laughs> good. Systems uh, that working through various departments, customs programming, as well as he is extremely aware of needs of growing companies, uh, logistical and supply chain aspect of it. So better than I, Israel will quickly introduce himself. And now on, Israel, please take a lead, and I will be backing up if needed. Okay. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Okay, I'll share my screen. Can everyone see that okay? We do. Okay, fantastic. So uh, a little bit about me um, that uh, wasn't introduced. Um, my background is actually in um, IT infrastructure. So uh, I started very early on um, at a data center outside of high school uh, at a company that's near my high school and uh, loved business. I love data. Right, and I extended that with uh, uh, working at a public company. That company was selling sunglasses, and uh, I learned even more there. And uh, as you know, this uh, experience and my history with the Fishbowl platform actually starts there. And we'll pick up that story uh, a little a little later. About the company, we're a small team. We focus primarily on Fishbowl inventory, but we do get customers on NetSuite or who are leaving NetSuite who are uh, going to NetSuite from Fishbowl, and we help them all the same. Right? Uh, the biggest difference about the company is that we honestly get business, right? Um, not only from a, from trying to make money, but also from a practical sense, right? And we love to keep it simple, right? And that's the our goal with our customers is to find the complex technology issues where business and technology intersect, and uh, give them that confidence that you know there is a solution, there is a path forward and we're the right ones to take care of that. And not only that, but we also have a global expertise. We have uh, staff members here in the United States, Mexico, Peru, and Australia, and some staff in India as well. So we're very well around, uh, well rounded in terms of import, export, uh, global supply chain, and local uh, issues uh, that a company might have. Um, I'm going to give you the key takeaways first, because um, I know a lot of company, uh, uh, for me, <laughs> uh, dinner's right after the end of the presentation, so I want to make sure that everyone who has a chance to uh, uh, take something away, that they get that up front, and that they remember these three things and the uh, three things you can do uh, after this presentation. The first uh, key takeaway is that I want to very much explain that uncertainty is here to stay in 2020, right? Um, I don't think we're going to come back to normal, right? There's no V-shaped recovery anymore. Um, could be a W, could be an L, who knows? But um, the companies that understand that now are going to be poised to uh, survive 2020, right? Uh, businesses will be pressured to manage the right amount of inventory. Um, I think um, even in my conversations with customers, the we're always uh, focusing on trying to reduce that inventory. Uh, you know, take that excess capital uh, out of inventory and redeploy it in other areas of the business, right? 
Uh, and now we're thinking about not just just in time inventory, but we're also thinking about inventories where can we uh, do we have the right amount of inventory to survive a supply chain shock, right? Uh, having inventory is way better than having no inventory. And ultimately, uh, recognize that Excel will only take you so far, right? So consider investing into improved systems uh, such as Streamline. And we'll talk about that, some of the Excel sins that I've seen other customers do and how we uh, atone for that in Streamline, okay? Some next steps um, on the website uh, that we have set up here, we have uh, our own ROI calculator for businesses on Fishbowl. Um, fill that out and we'll be able to uh, give you an idea of when you should expect some um, ROI with Streamline, the 14 day trial. And uh, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one project review. If you're using Fishbowl, we can actually go through the same kind of uh, live example that we've done here at the presentation uh, with you and your Fishbowl database. Uh, together. So you can see your data, see your business inside of Streamline. Okay. All right, let's look at where where we've been here today. It's been a very crazy year, as, as best as I could, as kindly as I can say it for my customers, right? The, uh, the best way I can describe it is that it, we've had a huge supply chain shock, right? Even year on year factory output, considering that we normally have a blip uh, for Chinese New Year uh, in China, uh, and my customers already planned for that. Um, we've took it, taken a big hit. Global trade is expected to decline, right? Uh, the GDP forecasts are not looking that great, right? And I don't want to be so glum, but there are some positive aspects of this, and hopefully we can beat those forecasts if businesses are able to support uh, the growth that's possible after this. So let's talk about how this will affect business, right? Expect a change in demand, not only um, just a simple uh, negative, but also a positive. And I've got some examples here in the next couple of slides. Expect the change of supply. Um, I'm speaking to my customers who have, um, honestly, a, a Chinese centric uh, supply chain. And one of the things that they talked about is where can I get this inventory? Where can I, can I look at Mexico? Can I look at Central America? Can I look at South America? Can I look at Africa? Uh, can I look at Europe for getting some of my uh, components or just my product, right? They no longer want to just rely on flying over to Shanghai and meeting with a bunch of vendors and walking out with a whole supply chain handed to them, right? We've realized that because of that, uh, we put our eggs all in one basket and some diversification, uh, I recommend at least two uh, per component, if possible, is a great way to move forward. And also expect some more, more government influence, right? I don't think any government now is looking at a um, import only uh, supply chain for some critical components like PPE. Um, one thing I learned rather recently is in America, we don't have any antibiotic uh, manufacturers. It's all important. You know, we've decided to uh, reduce the cost for those things and get them overseas. And because of that, we don't have them on our own, right? So we have to then, you know, beg for uh, these factories to give us that output when other uh, other places are going to need them, right? Uh, you'll see that um, you'll see even more uh, government influence in terms of trade war. Right? We already had a little bit of that uh, coming into this uh, new year. I uh, was hoping to uh, be past it, but uh, obviously not. And now uh, expect uh, duties and tariffs and other incentives for businesses to kind of bring that uh, production back home. Right, And that is where hopefully some positivity can come out of it. You know, Some new businesses, some new life that we may have lost here in Australia, in you know, uh, United States, uh, I see United States you know, ordering a lot of inventory from uh, Mexico, for example, as a new possibility. Right? Um, questions to ask your team, right? Um, when, you're, when you're working for uh, in these kind of emergency situations, um, I, I hope you've already asked these questions before, but uh, I'll ask them again, right? How can we so solve for these supply chain changes and disruptions, right? 
Um, I think um, everyone's seen how drastic or how jarring an empty shelf looks like. Um, but uh, on the flip side, I have some customers who sell to grocery stores and it's been the most amazing time uh, lately because they just keep shipping product. They just ship pallets and pallets of, of food, of snacks, of anything like that. And they're just keeping, they're doing as much as they can to keep things on the shelves, right? So not only for the negative, but also for the positive because sometimes that can happen as well, right? How can we solve for demand sign changes, right? Uh, sometimes the demand just changes on you and you had no idea this was gonna happen, but uh, adapt to it, react to it. The picture I have here, I clipped out of a uh, Japanese newspaper talking about how Tokyo is running out of tents. <laughs> what? <laughs> no one's going homeless, right? No one's going camping, but they're buying, families are buying these tents because, uh, and very rarely do they have the entire home, uh, and we're talking about homes or apartments that are very, very small traditionally, where they're all tied up together. And um, I have friends who have kids and, it's already pretty tough in American sized homes to be uh, all together, right? And now these families are all together in a small place and they wanna give their children a quiet space or a space of their own to study, right? So they're buying these tents, putting them in patios and putting them in living rooms just to give a, a kid a place to play video games or read a book or just be calm for a bit so that mom and dad can do uh, a webinar. <laughs> um, but also um, on the flip side of things, that also is turning into business. I don't have that picture uh, up here yet, but there was a very funny picture of, a, uh, of the same idea, but as a pop-up tent for uh, office cubicle, right? Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do that one, but uh, it's fun nonetheless. Um, and, and, more, and more brass tacks, right? More, uh, be much more direct. Uh, are we gonna make any money? Uh, what is the cash movement going to be after this supply shock, right? It's very easy to, to just do what a company is normally doing. Um, for example, the same planning systems, the same uh, des decision systems you might have for next year is going to get stressed quite a bit in the coming months. If you're shut down now, um, nothing, nothing for you to do, but take this time to take a look at those systems and, and be very honest with yourselves. Can I, uh, adapt to asking me having to ask these questions of what is our revenue going to look like? What is our cost of goods sold going to look like? Right. Um, it's great if you have the inventory, but uh, knowing how that's going to move could raise some pretty big issues. You might be fine from an inventory and supply issue, but maybe not fine from a cash issue. Right. So be very well aware of that. Okay. Uh, and back to the more positivity is. How do, we, how do I plan for reopening activities? Uh, here in uh, California, I think we've just now settled on the, the rules for reopening. Uh, I'm so happy to get out of the house and get a haircut, but uh, gotta wait, right? And now's the time to kind of make sure that we're planning for that at these kind of uh, emergencies. I have a feeling that um, most companies here in the United States specifically out on the uh, East Coast side where there's a lot more uh, natural disasters like uh, flooding or uh, hurricanes or tornadoes are much more aware of these kind of like emergencies and shut down. So here in the US, we kind of have that already, but they're very short term ones, right? They're, they're, they're a few days, right? Not, a, not months, right? So definitely have that, uh, that frame of mind to know how are we gonna put all this together? So uh, I've pretty much just asked a bunch of questions about what do we do, right? But I also wanna be very, very clear that you need to also think about what will we do, right? You can't just be asking questions to ask. You have to think about what you actually will do, right? As an option, right? Uh, some more lessons from 2008. Um, when I started my uh, consulting experience, um, I was working for a public company in IT and my background was just keeping printers and desktops working. And because I was the youngest person at the company, you know, this is when Twitter and Facebook were my normal, but to anybody who was older than 25, they were barely on Facebook, they were barely on Twitter. 
and uh, I was put in charge of the online sales data coming into from the website team to Great Plains. Um, I think it was Great Plains 9 at the time. And uh, my job was to make sure that data was going well and to review it and provide data to the rest of the sales team. Right? And some of the red flags that I could start paying attention to was the website sales dropping or website visits dropping. And uh, trying to explain that to the executive team was kind of odd. You know, they, they were like, oh, that's fine. It's, it's just bad weather. Um, see here, you know, there's, there's a, you know, a hurricane on, in Florida. No one's going to buy sunglasses during a hurricane. I'm like, yeah, well, you sure? Watch for the red flags. I was too young back then to really have enough uh, executive pull to get people to think to change. But the red flags were already there. Right? We already knew some of the things were going to happen um, probably as early as January, and businesses had time to think about this. Right? Always watch for the red flags. Uh, stay on top of your receivables. Um, I think it seems pretty obvious to say this, but uh, we're not going to do anything with a business if we run out of cash. Right? Pick up the phone. Right? Figure out where your cash is going to be in the next month or two months. A lot of this is already done. Right? I think a lot of businesses have already looked at that. Yet, but continue to look at that because not a lot of companies are going to continue to be available or viable businesses, um, including your vendors, um, uh, probably this year. I, I do expect more businesses to go out of business uh, later this year. And uh, be creative. Develop alternative revenue streams. Right? Um, what's interesting is that um, I, uh, for just for this presentation, I was actually looking online a few weeks ago for a new webcam, right? And it was just, it reminded me that um, there, that these kind of changes to supply chain and to customer demand are going to spur new businesses that you probably even didn't even think about. And when I was searching for, um, you know, webcam and whoever had a webcam because Amazon was out, there was no availability of these webcams or the new ones that I wanted. I got a lot more advertisement on how to set up work from home stations or kits where the desk, the computer, the standing desk, you know, here I've got a standing desk right now, would be sent to you and set up and whole new business models were created within a week, uh, it feels, of people nationally being uh, working from home, right? And see, those are the kind of businesses that are uh, confident in themselves and are able to uh, take the same business, like they, they were already selling desks, but they changed the marketing to develop an alternative revenue stream instead of selling to a business that would have a floor of cubicles to, you know, uh, furnish. They are now selling to those same people that need a place to work just at home, you know, direct to a uh, consumer. Review the contracts, right? Um, I think... Um, I think a lot of companies who may have debt now, a lot of my customers who are, you know, they're of sophistication and they have some debt, kind of forget that uh, there are debt covenants uh, listed in there. And it could be debt, co debt covenants related to inventory, to cash flow, right? To the viability of certain aspects of your business that were uh, required to uh, take on a loan or some other agreement, right? Review them. You gotta know what you're dealing with now in order to be able to plan for the future. And um, I think the last thing, which I, I kind of feel like is the really most the important thing, is to play the what if game. Right? Uh, what if you know, uh, we don't open up for another month? Right? What does that do? Uh, what if we do open up today? What is that going to do? What if the inventory that we're planning for this entire division is no longer available because we can uh, slice and dice our forecasting data and narrow down a specific division or a specific supplier? Those kind of what if scenarios are really, really important because um, if you're waiting until you can make those decisions when they're happening, you're gonna make bad decisions. Uh, me personally, I'm learning to uh, fly a plane. And uh, what was instructed to me was, we wanna learn all the emergency decisions on the ground, right? There's an emergency checklist. And if you're trying to remember what that emergency checklist is in the air, you're good as dead. Right? You have to just know that stuff from memory. So your team needs to know um, pretty quickly. I'm saying like same day, 
uh, on how to react and how to triage the situation in order to be able to react to it. Right. Okay, so core problem. Um, we've got four areas of focus and uh, ultimately as I bring this back to inventory, my experience is just on how to get boxes in the door and out the door, right? Nothing, on, no, nothing beyond that, right? So when we're talking about how I can help a company get inventory uh, moving again, right? Um, these are the four areas that I think the company should think about in terms of being able to get that done. In the end, I'm not a sales consultant. In the end, I'm not a marketing consultant. I understand those things, but we need th those teams to work well so that our inventory team can work well for the business. So the first focus area is data, right? Is there more we can do with it? Um, businesses that already have Fishbowl, uh, in my experience, um, use it in, in most of the time, I would say 50-50, uh, uh, not to the full ex extent, right? And they're not using fe uh, features like custom fields, and they're not using features like uh, data uh, exports and queries and things like that. And they don't know what they have, especially with a company that has at least two years of activity in Fishbowl. Um, there's a lot of good data that we can mine from Fishbowl that we can use in platforms like Streamline in order to do something really, really impactful for the company. Decisions, right? Um, we have to be able to uh, connect data with a decision, right? I, I think there's a, a couple of instances where I think some executives can get pretty um, upset, or not, maybe not upset, just exacerbated by the idea of having, we need more data, right? And, and, and not making any decisions with it. I'm a person that would, that is predisposed to make a decision, right? As much as my wife hates when I just change my mind, uh, once I change my mind, for that moment, I'm sticking with it, right? And, I'm, you, and, I, and I implore that companies will um, pair up decision-making with data more often, right? But I understand when, there, when, there's no, there's no, when there's no data, you still gotta make a decision. Actions, right? So once we made a decision, what action are we actually gonna take, right? And I, I've seen it. I've seen the, the the cascading effect where we have the data, we made a decision, and the the farther away we get from the data, right, we we it becomes less and less impactful, right. And the companies need to really really understand what makes data decision and actions um, not uh, uh, not effective, right. So we got to think about the questions of what. What makes us not react quickly to those decisions? The, 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 decision, the decision was made, right? Do we know how to perform that action? Do we know that we're gonna do it accurately? Do we know if uh, the team is uh, confident in those decisions, right? And lastly, a presentation in advance, is um, that confidence, right? Do we, does the entire stack give you confident answers that you know that you can act upon that you know your decisions are right, and that you know that you're giving good data back into the system to make sure that we have feedback on our entire uh, process that we have to do with inventory, right? Because if you don't have confidence, then why are we doing this? You know, we're just acting as if it's true, okay? So let's talk a little bit about how Streamline can help you, right? And the first thing uh, I wanna talk about is something really, really um, probably too personal, <laughs> we'll see. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, Excel SINs, right? And I say SINs because, you know, I, I've, I've been at this for a very long time. I've, you know, my first few years of working in a public company, I thought Excel was everything, right? Uh, even when I connected that Excel system or Excel file to a database, I still thought Excel was, was everything, right? Um, this is an, exa an example of one of my customers Excel sheets saying, hey man, like we have some pretty advanced Excel and we need you to connect data from Fishbowl into this Excel so that it can do its magic, right? 
I was like, okay, sure, show me what you got. And this is what they had. So I've uh, changed the names to protect the innocent. And uh, essentially what this is, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, where you've got you know, inventory at the beginning of the week, what's going to happen that week, what's going to happen next week, what's going to happen next week, and then we have a forecast, right? And uh, that's cool. That's great. Um, but we just got new information that makes the inventory data obsolete. So now you got to go back into all your data and hand key that information, right? It's a, and to me, um, as much as I loved Excel, uh, it's now, a, for me, for inventory planners, I think this is a bit of a sin, right? It's too slow, right? It doesn't take us to where we need to go. Um, when I try to explain some of these things about Excel, and, and most people don't really understand it, especially from my perspective, who can write software and have seen a lot of other more advanced software, is that I, I think the kindest thing that I can say about Excel is that Excel is like that piece of, it's like a piece of paper that can be only folded once, right? Imagine origami, imagine a, even a paper airplane, right? You got to put more folds into that in order to make it fly. And to me, when compared to something like Streamline, Excel is kind of light, yeah. But we can still work with it. We can still uh, make Excel useful. It's just that in the, per in the context of trying to do these what-if scenarios and planning, Excel uh, really kind of starts to slow down significantly, right? And I kind of explained it again, is that most of the time when you just have Excel, everything's a nail, right? It just Maybe you should, shouldn't always put the, put the hammer down. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, a case study. Right? Uh, in the beginning of March, um, I wasn't really sure where this was going to go. In, in fact, it was, it was a pretty scary time, I'll be honest with you. Um, I got a request from a customer that I helped earlier that year, this year, on um, if they had some ideas on how they could improve their reports within Fishbowl. Uh, the company pictures that I've got here, uh, they're not the same company. I know there's a few different emergency food manufacturing companies. I wanted to find something that was representative, but if, uh, yeah, this is not, this, these are not, these are not my customers, but they do very something very similar. And um, what was happening is, as you can imagine, with everyone at home, everyone very scared about what's going to happen to food and you know, medicine and things like that, they've been buying buying, buying, buying tons of emergency food. And this emergency food is uh, essentially the, uh, the bucket, right? And what goes in the bucket are these uh, black envelopes. And what's in the black envelopes are some uh, additional servings, right? So in this case, we've got uh, creamy chicken rice, right? And typically there's uh, either one or three servings of that particular um, meal, right? Or multiple envelopes. And then within that packet, um, you'll have ingredients like the dry powder or the rice or the pasta or uh, whatever that's uh, uh, shelf stable. And uh, within that, you'll have uh, premixes and things like that. And, and eventually, it's just one long structure, right? And that became a problem, right? It became a huge problem when we're dealing with this uh, COVID-19 scenario, right? With everyone at home wondering if the grocery stores are going to be available still, and what, what are they going to do? Right? So they order it. This customer had a huge increase in orders, right, and, and, a, and an unimaginable amount of uh, volume, right, and they want to fill it. They, they, they want, they have the ability, the food still exists, let's package it, get it out the door, right. But the problem was that this company was using Excel to do the inventory planning, right, and if you can imagine that uh, one bucket may actually contain over 500 uh, net raw materials, the overlap is quite high. So when certain orders and forecasts are being produced, the Excel team or the team that was running the, the planning before just could not keep up with how fast things were changing. Uh, not only things were changing in terms of just production, but also supply, right? Different uh, companies were being brought online for co-packing. Uh, different ingredients were being swapped out. Whole new product were being created in order to meet demand. And it just, it was clearly a bottleneck for the company. They were, they were barely getting by, but they were not uh, having fun at all. 
So what was the solution? The solution was ultimately to purchase Streamline. Right? Uh, we were comparing Streamline with some other platforms uh, in terms of uh, speed to implement, and we I gave them my honest feedback of what how long Fishbowl, uh, Fishbowl and Streamline could take to connect together, and uh, they ultimately chose that. And when they purchased, uh, we got the license to them uh, very quickly. We then the next day called them up, got their software connected, and started going through the uh, training process of walking through how the bill materials were structured, the envelopes, the powders, the pasta, the rice, and started getting a good handle on what was going on. Let's talk about the impact. I think um, this is the fun part of my job, right? Where I can, you know, and I love to do this on site, but can't really go, go on site anymore. But uh, the impact was pretty, pretty measurable. Um, I don't have the financial impacts yet. They're still running through that as part of uh, manufacturing uh, and, uh, and production. Uh, April's not done yet, technically. And, but I know that with, that, the, with the conversations I've had with that team, there's been a huge uh, sense of relief uh, knowing that uh, they, they can now handle any changes in the supply chain. If that's product-based because uh, customers' preferences are changing, or supply-based because they have to switch from uh, another milk powder company to another, right? And how do they communicate effectively to that new vendor that, hey, I've got this demand, can you handle it, right? They can now come to those conversations with data, with confidence, right? So I've talked a lot about just um, the theory, right? And what I'd like to do is actually show Fishbowl on screen uh, live uh, connected to uh, Streamline, and then place a purchase order so that I can show you the entire life cycle of what Streamline is best at doing, giving you actions, giving you decisions, and giving you confidence to uh, believe that, Fish, that Streamline and Fishbowl together are managing your business well, okay? So uh, if you're not familiar with Fishbowl, or you're uh, coming from another platform, this is Fishbowl. It's a very easy software, uh, very approachable. Actually, it's logged me out. Log back in. And um, this is the platform. I've got, um, just like any other inventory system, right? I've got my products. Here I've got my, uh, my blue medical masks, right? Within my blue medical masks, I have, uh, uh, in this case, I have a case of 100. I've got a bill material. Right? And in that bill material, I've got uh, the, the packaging box here, and then the mask itself. And then from that mask, I also have bill materials for the fabric and the elastic, something very basic, you know, nothing, nothing too complex. Right? Uh, from my inventory, I've got uh, a certain amount of units on hand, about a month's worth in this, in this system. And I've got uh, not only that, but also a history of sales orders that I've placed to just try to generate some uh, some activity in this uh, this database. Right. As well, I have no purchase orders because I'm good with inventory or my decisions are good, so I've got nothing else to worry about. Right? So this is the data that we're currently working inside of uh, Fishbowl, and when I pull up Streamline you'll realize how quick and easy it is to get data out of Fishbowl, update that data in Fishbowl, and then uh, see how that feedback works in the Streamline. So you can do this now with the trial, uh, even the 14-day trial and the 30-day trial. You can uh, connect to your Fishbowl and download that data and experience for yourself what that would be like. Okay. So I want to start with going by a new project, Fishbowl, next, and uh, some Technical details here, we'll take care of that with you if we do a, a, a 30 minute console. So I put my database name, my official username and password, and hopefully if the demo gods like me today, this will work. Right? So what our Streamline's done in that blink of a second has downloaded the items, the sales order history, the uh, on-hand uh, inventory, the uh, open POs, open sales orders, all that good data to generate this uh, workbook, right? And from that, we've got, uh, I'll, give you some, I'll give you a bit of a lay of the land, but 
we've got inventory planning uh, for reports. So I've um, I've written myself over the 10 years of working with Fishbowl uh, many reports that do a lot of this right, as a linear uh, read-only report. Uh, and now it's very exciting to be able to offer these sort of uh, interactive uh, solutions where customers can actually uh, get these reports but also interact with them. Right. So what I'm going to do is, without explaining anything more, is how easy getting orders back into uh, Fishbowl is. So we click on this, these plant orders and we'll hit create. And that's it. Really, really easy. Right. And now it's actually downloaded some new data. All of my purchasing demand has gone away. I can see that my current order is just on my manufacturing activity. That happens inside of Fishbowl as a separate process. And if I pop back into Fishbowl and I look at my purchase orders, I've got my POs. It's, that is how fast we want uh, companies to feel confident to be able to take data, crunch it with Streamline, make decisions, and put those decisions to action. In this case, placing a purchase order so that you know nobody has any excuses from going from here's a problem to I've got the solution. Right? Um, there are other videos on Streamline for other aspects like how the demand forecasting uh, module works and how uh, these what these graphs do. But I think uh, for the purposes of the webinar, we'll just keep it pretty light um, and uh, we'll have other opportunities to uh, work with you to get your fishbowl data into Streamline, walk you through how these forecasts and how these uh, uh, ordering plans work ultimately and show you how you can uh, get the best out of Streamline for, uh, for your business. Remember, so we're nearing the end of the presentation. Uh, key takeaways is that uncertainty is here to stay for uh, 2020. Uh, expect it. Don't act like it's going to happen. It will change your business. Businesses will be pressured to manage the right amount of inventory. Not so much just in time anymore, but maybe we do take a bit of a hit on turnover in order to make sure that we can uh, endure any supply, shock, supply shocks. And remember that Excel will only take you so far, right? It's uh, once you realize what Streamline can do, uh, you know, that's the, probably the fun part about having some uh, uh, Zoom meetings with customers uh, who are interested in, uh, in Streamline, the smiles that you get when you, they realize that, oh my gosh, I no longer have to touch that Excel file ever again. Really, really excites me to uh, offer that to customers. And that's it. And uh, now it's time for the Q&A. Uh, remember, uh, you can try our ROI calculator at that website right there, gmdh.ilx.io. Uh, you can download a 14-day trial if you're after watching this on uh, YouTube after the fact. And uh, on that website, you can also schedule a project with you with me if you're using Fishbowl uh, now, and we can hook that uh, streamlined project up to your uh, Fishbowl today. Okay. Any questions? Awesome. So I think we will let people uh, some time to write down their questions. Please feel free, chat, Q&A, taps. Uh, meanwhile, I wanted to take a minute to thank you, Israel, for such a fabulous presentation. I think it's extremely important, especially nowadays, when we are pushed to be as sufficient as possible, to take as much as possible from the resources that we have right now. So the first question, Israel. What about if we do not have Fishbowl? Sure. So uh, we, uh, Streamline has other consultants that might be able to help you a bit better. Um, in certain cases, you know, uh, reach out to me. I'll, uh, I'll consider it. But my primary platform is Fishbowl. Inside of Streamline, uh, not only do we, can we connect to Fishbowl directly, but we can also connect to a database. So if you have an ERP system that is, uh, has an ODBC connection or on MySQL, for example, we can make the connection and pull the same information that we currently enjoy on Fishbowl uh, over to Streamline. Not only that, but we also have uh, spreadsheets. Uh, you can pull, if you only have data from spreadsheets, you can connect to a spreadsheet and get sales, inventory, and all that, and still enjoy uh, the, uh, the features that, uh, that uh, Streamline has. Uh, but if you also have these other platforms like Sin7, Deer, Dynamics, GP, uh, Micronet or QuickBooks, 
uh, you can also connect those to Streamline and get that uh, data. Uh, a follow-up question. What if I don't have um, enough data? Is there such a question as enough data or you can, we can work through any amount of information that we might have? Yeah, so I can, I, I've got a, a couple of customers who have got large data sets, uh, maybe multiple years, and some customers where they do have that, but they don't trust any of it uh, for, for good, bad uh, reasons. So what they like to do is actually just pull the current inventory and the current uh, items and just use the forecasting feature on its own. Uh, in fact, I had a medical device manufacturer buy Streamline just to not deal with Excel sheets. Uh, the situation was that they were going to commercialize a product. Uh, it was a machine, very complex, uh, maybe a thousand items in the build material. And uh, they were using for just production, they were using Streamline just for production planning. So what was happening is that uh, bill material uh, changes were happening rather quickly and the Excel sheets were going out of date rather quickly. And they were just using Streamline to pull data out and then say, okay, uh, engineering has asked for this new component. Let's make sure we buy it correctly and not uh, lose, tra uh, lose track of it because that's what was happening with Excel. So they would uh, download just a small bit of data and then use their forecast to uh, handle the inventory much, much better. So yes, you can use Streamline with uh, as little data as you have. Uh, obviously, more is better, uh, but we, we can do a lot with uh, with the Vino as well. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so while we're waiting for some more questions, guys, from you, uh, I would like to jump to a more general one, maybe. So during your presentation, you've mentioned red flags, data, decision, actions, confidences, but we're in a crisis now, right? So I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know where my business is going, what's going to be happening in two weeks, in a week, in a month. So is it worth investing right now into your software, into data visibility, into this transparency feature, or it's better to play safe and stay as you is right now? Well, I think every business is going to have to ask themselves that question. And uh, it really depends on, do you, do you can you honestly believe that uh, you will have uh, uh, the, the business come back, right? And a lot of companies right now, they feel pretty confident that businesses will come back and that they'll be able to adapt to the situation. I have some customers in uh, car manufacturing, right? And uh, they're looking at Streamline right now because like, look, the factories are closed, but we know the factories will come back. Eventually those, uh, the, the, the demand for new cars will, will, will return and we need to be ready, right? And this pause is actually giving them time to actually review all the bad habits that they might have in a, in a business. And uh, inventory planning is one of them. Um, I know of a lot of companies, uh, I, I like to pick on Excel, but I know a lot of companies who have uh, uh, people who are very expert at uh, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Access. And uh, I, that's probably a little higher level than, than, than Excel, but Access, Excel, uh, tools that are very, very old uh, need to get re-looked at so that they, they have a chance at uh, modernizing. So now is a good time to consider modernizing um, because uh, you've got the time, the team's got the appetite, they're ready to learn something so they feel confident going into it. So that's probably where I'd be most into is to just uh, give that confidence to, to companies. Uh, but ultimately, um, I do know of two of my own personal companies that I work with who are likely going out of business because they cannot handle um, not taking orders in for months, right? And that's, that's, that's sad to see, but uh, hopefully new businesses come back and uh, uh, fill the need. After and come back stronger. It's a great time. Yes, yes. Uh, so a couple of new questions. First one, how is Streamline dealing with COVID-19 situation with regard to adjusted forecast? Okay, so in terms of uh, COVID-19, right, um, I've got a couple of examples here of, uh, from the, from the uh, mask database that I've got that kind of gives you an idea of what you could do. Right? And uh, this mask uh, item, in this case dust masks, let's say it's for construction only. Right? If, uh, if uh, you've got a huge marked up demand for dust masks, let's say by 3x or you know, 10x, 
So, uh, boom. I just as easily I can change the uh, calculated forecast that Streamline has because it has a lot of uh, AI built into it to take the peaks and the valleys and decide, okay, is that a seasonal thing or is that just a one-time thing or do we have a uh, growing demand or a lowering demand for that? And you can very easily uh, take into some existing forecasts and adapt to it because maybe Streamline hasn't seen uh, uh, what's happening in April to continue for the rest of the year, right? You can put that information in really quickly as this uh, little uh, key uh, uh, macro uh, to say multiply all the forecasts by three and roll it forward. But you could also say, you know what? Maybe I think my biggest demand is just going to be in April and May, so I'll put in ten thousand, right? And oops, ten thousand, and that's all I want to do, right? How does that now? Uh, play into my inventory planning if I just have April and May going on, right? And there's a variety of tools. I don't want to go too into depth, but those are some of the ways you could handle uh, some of the uh, growing and decreasing uh, moments with uh, COVID. Uh, okay, great. So the second question would be, we currently use Microsoft Dynamics, QuickBooks, and Fishbowl to manage entire revenue. Can we connect to Streamline through all three to be all times, like automatically, instead of un uploading exported Excel data? Okay, got it, fantastic. So what we could probably do uh, in that situation, I've worked with companies who are, <laughs> that's the pizza guy. <laughs> um, I work with companies to be able to connect to multiple data, uh, data sets in terms of uh, fishbowl. So uh, when we're connecting to multiple data sets, we actually try to blend it together. So there might be an automatic extraction from Dynamics, an automatic extraction from QuickBooks, and uh, we just stay within the, the fishbowl platform. And we blend it all together to see one final picture inside of Streamline. That's been pretty popular uh, because a lot of customers who are new to fishbowl and love Streamline, uh, would be interested in getting some of their historical data into uh, Streamline and Fishbowl together. So we, we blend, do that kind of de data blending projects uh, pretty often. Uh, another thing that uh, Streamline can do is export data to a database. So we've got one customer who likes to see these um, inventory planning data, uh, not only this, but the, let me add a column for uh, uh, demand forecast, here we go. And they'll actually uh, take these data sets, right? And we'll, these uh, sales uh, movement by month and uh, export that to a data so that they can use it as part of some other uh, reporting inside of their platform. So we can get data out, uh, out of the platforms and into the platforms pretty easily. And uh, uh, Streamline is proving to be rather flexible with that. Awesome. So the outputs, does the streamline then sends it back? How does the outputs from the streamline work? Oh, sure. So uh, in terms of uh, export table, there's an export to database, right? I don't have this uh, connected at all, so this won't work, but that's what would happen is the, the, the planning data, the decisions that uh, streamline is offering, all the forecasts, all the, all the effort that's get put into this workbook can be exported to a database uh, using that button. It's very easy. So there is a communication kind of thing happening. Yes. Awesome. So the last so far question, um, how to consider supplier uncertainty service levels for the following months? Ah, for the following months. Okay. So uh, in Streamline, um, I don't know the hotkey uh, myself, but I, there is a, there's the option, uh, maybe the team can help me with this, is to mm -hmm. indicate that a, a certain month is not going to be available uh, for this item. So to say, uh, even though we're ordering for June, July, August to maybe not uh, try to place an order or to expect a delivery in June, July, August, uh, this is very common in uh, customers with the Chinese New Year. So they'll mark off that, hey, don't expect any deliveries in this period. So please push them forward in the previous period so that I know exactly how much to order before uh, Chinese New Year. Uh, I, just totally forgot the, the hot key for that, but uh, yeah, I can get that to you uh, 
uh, if you reach out to us, we can show you how that how that works. Guys, last chance to answer to get the answers to your questions. And uh, uh, one one thing, just just for fun, uh, Juan, uh, my family is from uh, Monterrey, so uh, thank you for coming. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Juan, for coming. <laughs> nice to know you. Awesome. Okay, guys. Thanks everyone for your time, attention. Thanks Israel even more for devoting your time to teach us today. And yeah, please contact us, send us a streamlined word <laughs> or to Israel and we will be happy to help you further. All you need is just close the work with us and we will get you through this. Thanks again, have a great evening, have a good night, however in what time zone is and we hope to hear from you soon. Stay tuned. We have a couple more webinars coming. Hope to see you there too. Bye.